Following the arrest of feared Zeta drug cartel leader Miguel Angel Trevino Morales, questions persist about Mexico President Enrique Peña Nieto's strategy in the country's violent drug war. Here with unique insight on the issue is Ricardo Ainsley, University of Texas professor, psychologist, and author of the book, The Flight to Save Juarez, Life in the Heart of Mexico's Drug War. Welcome. Thank you, Peggy. Glad to be here. Let's start with this uh, high-profile arrest. What does it say to you about Mexico's uh, new strategy in this drug war? Well, uh, President uh, Peña Nieto has tried to move away from the kingpin strategy of uh, his predecessor, which was take down the heads of the uh, cartel leaders as a way of trying to reduce the violence. That strategy did not uh, yield good results in terms of re reducing violence. And lots of violence. Lots of violence ensued because of that. Absolutely. So uh, people thought he was going to take a different direction. Actually, I think what happens here is that we see that that strategy can't be set aside entirely. I mean, you have the head man of the most feared cartel in Mexico in your sights. You have to act. Would, would you say that the kingpin strategy is working then? I'd say that the king, king, kingpin strategy is unavoidable, at least in part. The problem is that there are other issues that that doesn't take care of. These cartels are actually uh, groups of organ, organized, organized crime, crime groups, and, and they, uh, uh, they, you take down one person and there's five, ten people wanting to take that slot. Okay. Um, Trevino Morales, is, he, he was monitored uh, by U.S. Immigration and Customs by a drone uh, right. from them. What is your opinion on using drones uh, along the border or even across the border? Well, I think the issue is that the cooperation between U.S. intelligence and Mexican authorities, that's the critical issue, whether you're using drones or informants or communications interceptions or whatever. That's the critical issue. And I think truly because both countries have a stake in what's going on, you're not going to be able to, to remove that. And, and actually a lot of the uh, kingpin arrests or takedowns have been related to U.S. intelligence input. So it's Including this one, I understand. Absolutely. There was a lot of yes. information going back and forth. Let's move on to your book. You take a closer look at how the drug war affects everyday people on both sides of the border. Um, how did you get to this very personal perspective? Well, I'm from Mexico originally, uh, but what is, when I started doing uh, my work on this book, was the epicenter of the drug war. They have um, the most violent city in the Americas at the time, uh, some people said in the world, uh, 11,000 people killed in Juarez in the span of six years. Um, that's a lot of deaths, a lot of victims. And uh, the Mexican government deployed about a quarter of its troops, 20 to 25 percent of its troops and federal police to Juarez. So it was the battleground, the key, the ground zero for the drug war. And, and that's what brought me to Juarez. I wanted to know what's going on, how does this really work? I mean, we are all familiar with the war between the cartels scenario, but, but really what's taking place on the ground and how is this affecting people? And specifically, you were looking at uh, human rights activists, right? The mistress of somebody in the uh, drug cartel. You, you got to some very specific people. Right. The four main characters in the book are uh, the mayor of Juarez at the time, uh, a human rights activist who was uh, under constant death threats, as, as was the mayor, I might say, the, the, the mistress of a mid-level uh, cartel, uh, Juarez cartel operative. He moved about... Uh, 50 to 70 kilos of cocaine every two weeks across the border. Um, and then uh, lastly, a Juarez journalist. You know, the journalists in Mexico are highly uh, vulnerable. Uh, many of them have been killed. Uh, yes, and there and throughout Mexico and the border cities, certainly. Um, you're a psychologist. Did being a clinician help you get some of these uh, sort of raw answers? You know, I think because I, I do uh, see patients on a regular basis, uh, I think that style of engaging people, especially when you're not just in and out, but you come repeatedly. It took me about two years of going into Juarez on a regular basis to kind of develop relationships. I think that opened up a lot of doors.
Okay, and I want to let people know they can hear a lot more uh, from you. Uh, Professor and author Ainsley will speak more about lessons from Mexico's drug war tonight at the Institute of Americas and again Saturday afternoon at the Barnes & Noble in Encinitas. For details, you can go to our website, kpbs.org. Ricardo Ainsley, thanks so much for talking with Thank us. Thank you, Peggy. It was a pleasure.